what I can say is I'm, I'm really excited about working with Billy. Um, just to give you a little feedback, it, I was just came back from the MLB owner meetings, and I can tell you that just universal praise for the hiring. I mean, people coming up, up to me um, from everywhere saying that we got a real pro, um, well-liked in the industry, well-respected. And so, um, listen, I'm excited. Um, it, listen, I put a lot of time into this. And I, like I always say, I've got a day job. So it's a, it's a relief to get somebody <laughs> that, that I feel really good about. And, uh, and just based on our conversations, I think it's going to be, you know, just um, he's going to be an easy person to work with. So uh, I really look forward to uh, the whole team getting, getting going here and, and, uh, and, and filling our needs. Both you and Sandy have stated a commitment to changing the culture of the Mets. Um, with all due respect to Billy, in his, in his last role, he ran an organization that brought in Mickey Calloway and saw a high-ranking employee indicted um, for providing opiates to players. So how do you just sort of reconcile the two? And is it something that you've talked about with Billy? Well, we've done we've done our due diligence, and uh, you know it's it's you know it's an it's an organization. Uh, it, it, you know, Billy's just one person in in that organization. Uh, we vetted it, um, you know, in, in multiple ways. We spoke to a lot of people that uh, were around the organization at that time. Um, we spoke to people within baseball, and we're we're incredibly comfortable with Billy and and. In, his decision making, and his ethics, and, and his integrity. And your conversations with Billy throughout the process, what struck you most about his vision? Well, I mean, you know, like I said in the opening comments, you know, we're dealing with someone with a, a vast a, array of experiences. Um, you know, he, he's he's a pro. I mean, he knows a lot about the game. He's uh, you know worked under some you know really good people. Um, and um, so we were just impressed by his communication skills, his knowledge of the game. Um, you know, I think the players in the in the in the locker room are going to just enjoy communicating with him, talking to him. Um, and so I think he brings a lot, you know, different skill sets to the table. And I think that's what this organization needed. What did you learn from this, uh, you know, first full year? Um, you know, at the head of the Mets and how do you think your role will change or evolve uh, compared to what it was this year? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the major learning was if you're going to be in first place for a hundred days, try to do it at the end of the season, not the middle of the season. I mean, that would, that would be helpful. Um, <laughs> um, listen, I mean, listen, it's a first year. There's a lot of learnings, you know, I'm just getting acquainted with, with baseball, um, getting up to speed on the language, getting up to speed on, uh, you know, just all the little intricacies. I mean, for, for an industry that's not, not a big industry, there's a lot of moving parts in running a baseball team, uh, whether it's analytics, whether it's technology, whether it's, you know, all sorts of player development and, and health. And so there's a lot of moving parts there. And, and, uh, which is why it's really important that we build all, all of these areas out and uh, find the best and brightest. And, and uh, uh, you know, and it's my, what is my job? My job is to provide the resources, find, find the people who can run, run these areas with Sandy and, and you know, find these people. So, um, and, and then let them do their thing. How do you plan to use Twitter going forward? And was that sort of, overemphasized or misunderstood it at some times. What do you mean misunderstood? Well, well, like, you know, what is the influence of your, of your mess, whatever messages you put out there? Would people well, emphasizing that too much? I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. Maybe it was novel, right? I mean, owners haven't really done much of that. And so uh, it was new, it was novel. It was also, um, I was trying to connect with the fans. And I actually think I was pretty successful at that. I think just getting feedback from people from the ballpark and around the area saying, yeah, they really enjoy it. They get, they, uh, they actually um, appreciate that type of interaction with the owner. Uh, Twitter is a tough place to do it in general, because 
It tends to be combative, uh, as you know. Uh, all of you who are tweeting out there, you can you can imagine you know what the comments are, and um, so it's a tough place to get your message across. And uh, so we'll see. I mean, um, I'm a busy guy, and there was a lot of that was during COVID, and uh, you know, and so um, we'll you know I'll I'll continue to tweet, probably not as much as I did previously. Um, you know, especially during the search, I wanted to respect the candidacies of the potential, you know, people we were, we were talking to and didn't want to make it a public search. And so um, didn't want to turn this into a game of some kind. Now, in the end, you know, it, you know, the, the media is interested in finding out what we're doing. And so it becomes a public search and I was trying to keep it as private as possible. Um, so, you know, I try to stay off of Twitter as part of that. And uh, so now that's over, I'll probably get back on and give it another shot and see see how it goes. But, you know, we'll see. You know, I mean, I think people like it. So why not keep going?